today i'll be going through the session on greylock so uh, introducing about myself i am somya working as a, as a software consultant at knowledge which is now part of nestec so today we'll be talking about greylock and before that let's see what are the knowledge knowledge etiquettes that we have to follow so you have to join this session 5 minutes prior to the session start time and then you have to submit the feedback so that uh, you know presenter can improve for the next session uh, please try to keep your devices such as mobile in silent mode and try to avoid unwanted chit chat during this session okay so the agenda for today will be like introduction on greylock and why we want to use greylock what is special about that uh, what is greylock architecture greylock core features and how we can install greylock in our local system and then uh, there will be a demo so let's get started with the introduction on greylock uh, so on daily basis we create like abundance of data so the sources of those data can be anything like your personal devices your applications or any operating system that you are using in your device so the like source of data can be everything but you need a centralized log manage, management system to you know kind of like see those data see those logs in efficient manner so greylog is kind of lms you can say log management system which is basically used to aggregate uh, organize and make, make sense of all these data that you contain in an lms so greylog is basically very efficient in co collecting and passing petabytes of data so you can like uh, pass a large amount of data using greylog so passing of data is a very important feature you know after passing only you can just uh, use those information for forensic investigation or threat hunting or you if you want to like debug any application or in any business analytics in general you can use those past data after that only so basically greylog is basically a log aggregation tool and we have talked about that why a log is very important so the next thing is why greylog is very important what makes greylog different from other logging tools so greylog is basically open source but it has some enterprise version version so greylog we can use for like if we have low amount of data and if we want a limited functionality with our greylog then we can use the open source which is generally called as open core plus we can use some of the commercial features as well so greylog also provide enterprise version of it uh, itself and we can use those features like security in greylog and any other features that has been supported by the enterprise version so for different solution like you have different use case in your mind for your project so you can uh, like create specific content or dashboard or alerts using greylog in a single place so that's why it is like more uh, more special you don't have to use like different tools for different things you just need to use greylog and everything is there on single dashboard or single ui interface you don't have to add any additional data storage need, uh, like data storage so when you install greylog you install mongodb you install open source for that so uh, these are basically used to store your indexes and your log data so you don't have to you know add any additional data storage use while using greylog it is very easier and more affordable so easier in a way if you are using like any log aggregation tool for the first time then for that greylog will be overwhelming for you but if you have used any greylog any log aggregation tool before greylog then it will be very easier for you to you know get started with greylog and of course it is more affordable affordable because it has its own data storage which uh, which are kind of open source as well you can find and fix issues quicker and easier so you have a single dashboard when we will go to the demo part you can see how easy it is to like find any issue you just have to type uh, a sentence and you will be able to get the uh, issues on the dashboard and it is very it may so these property makes easier to fix all the bugs in a, like in a very small span of time you can also share the data in greylog basically if you want to uh, like share a particular stream of logs or particular packets of log with your team or with a particular user you can just click on the share button and you are ready to go you just have to add the user and you are ready to go and you can share the greylog so that's why greylog is very efficient because everything is at one place hello uh let's talk about greylog architecture 
so uh, it is very simple a gray log has a very simple architecture mm, we have syslog client we have gray log server we have web interface uh, elastic search and mongodb so what basically use you uh, there is a client from which your gray log server you have to just add one file or you can say one script in your syslog client or you on, or on your local client of course all the logs are being stored on your client in a file format so even in your uh, laptop in your uh, operating system like ubuntu all the logs are being stored in the form of files so we just export those files format in our gray log server and then we can store it in elastic search and mongodb for further use if we want uh, it directly on the web interface from web interface you, you can pass the query and you will be able to get the data from uh, data from the gray log server so uh, we we have elastic search and mongodb so elastic search is basically used for storing uh, you can even use open search instead of elastic search it's basically on your choice uh, but in the latest version of gray log that is 5.0 it is recommended to use open search uh, okay so talking about elastic search it is basically used to store the log so all of the log logs will be stored in elastic search and the data or you can say metadata about the logs will be stored in mongodb so the any uh, data related to indices or index will be stored in mongodb and we can store a, a very large amount of data in both of this uh, databases and then we can use even if you want to see these data on the web interface we have to call the gray log server and it will call the data if if these data are very old then it will be called from elastic search or it will be like directly generated from the gray log server only because it has been pushed very recently so you can just generate from gray log server and if it is very old then it will be like uh, stored in elastic search and you can get that data from here only so this is the simple architecture of gray log so if you want to like orchestrate your uh, gray log architecture you want to increase the server so you just have to increase the gray log server you have to install all the like exporter no, uh, node exporter or you can say the uh, log exporter in your different client and you can increase the size of elastic search or mongodb or increase this uh, number of servers of elastic search and mongodb to store the large amount of data so you need to be updated you need to update it horizontally and all the services must be tightly integrated to allow efficient management and configuration of your system so this is all about gray log architecture then we can move to the gray log core features so basically gray log uh, support a very large uh, kind of features so let's start with streams first so stream is basically uh, when data comes when logs come to your uh, gray log server so you can provide a different tagging uh, you can attach tagging on your uh, data and then in that way you can just categorize your data so what you can do suppose uh, like 1000 logs are coming in in one minute in your gray log server what you want to do you want to see the data that have uh, error tag so you can just create one index that i want uh, these kind of data in one stream which is which has like uh, tag as error and i want it in this stream and i have another generic stream in which i want all the data so you can just uh, provide the tagging on those logs and then generate a different stream so basically streams operate as a form of tagging for incoming messages streams route messages into categories in real time and team rules instruct gray log to route messages in the appropriate stream so why do we need to categorize the data so this is a very important question so you need to categorize data in uh, for many use cases suppose you uh, want to monitor exception or error, error rates in your whole environment so you can use the streams for that suppose you want to get a list of all the fail ssh login so you can use streams for that as well and suppose you want to forward a subset of messages to other data analysis or maybe a bi tool or bi system to reduce the license cost or any other use case you can use these streams so that's why stream is very useful and it is kind of best practice to create streams when you uh, generate a lot of amount, like a very large amount of logs talking about the gray log search space so basically it is kind of whenever you log into your uh, gray log ui uh, ui window 
so you will get a search page there and on that search page uh, search page is basically used to uh, you know it will show the logs uh, this is the exact page where you can search the different logs that you want to search on different logic on the basis of different logic so it is the interface used to search logs directly so so you can also you know save those searches you have to pass one uh, pass on one simple query and if you want to reuse that query again and again you can just save it on your uh, dashboard of the search page and you can even visualize visualize the dashboard widgets that may be added directly to the dashboard from within the search screen so it is as simple as that are uh, talking about graylog dashboard so it is different from the search page uh, in graylog dashboard basically what you can do it basically act as a grafana dashboard so it is basically used to generate or create lot of graphs or maps that you want to create on the basis of the information that has been uh, like extracted from the log events so the graph that you can uh, create is kind of like you can create pie chart you can create histograms on the basis of number of logs that you are getting from a particular page and if you want to see that uh, in this ip range how many logs that i am getting per, per day or per uh, or by after 5 minutes so you can just create a dashboard about that and it will be like more easier for your uh, further readings that you want to perform on your logs we have alerts as well in the graylog uh, you know server only so you just have to create uh, different events for that so you have to generate some condition you must have your conditions in your mind that for this particular condition i want to create an alert so you can create on a particular condition basis you can create a event definition and on that event definition you can provide your alert so when a given condition is met it will be stored as an event and can be used to trigger a notification so uh, it pro uh, so graylog provide alert me me mechanism as well we have content packs in graylog so content pack as the name suggests it is basically the pack of all the contents that graylog provide so what you can do if you want to like create uh, you can also create the content pack basically and what is content pack uh, so graylog provide lots of features so for your specific use case if you want to create custom inputs or streams or dashboards or alerts to support a security use case so you can create a content pack for that for the, uh, that and you can just export it in your graylog server and you are ready to use that even there are lots of content packs that has been provided by the community you can use those content pack and you are ready to go you don't have to do a lot of changes there is there is already been a customized content packs that has been uh, like offered by the community and you can use that and just tweak according to your changes and that is it so basically as the name suggests it is basically used to accelerate the setup process for a specific a specific data source and a content pack can include input extractors streams dashboards alerts and pipeline uh, processes talking about the index so index is basically a very common term in all the logging tools so index as as the base act as the basic unit of storage for data in open source and open search and elastic search so index sets provide configuration for retention sharding and replication of the stored data Uh, we have graylog sidecar so uh, as we have mentioned before if you want to just uh, get the data from your system or uh, you can use syslog and you just have to create a simple configuration file and then you will be able to ship those data from your system to the remote graylog server but uh, uh, at production level you use a different kind of log shippers for different use cases uh, it can be beats it can be nx log or it can be any kind of log shipper so sidecar is basically an agent which is used to manage all these log shippers so these log shippers are used to collect os logs from linux and windows servers and graylog supports management of any log shippers as a backend so basically sidecar is basically you can say it is basically used to manage the log shipper and log shipper is basically used to ship the log from the local or you can say from your linux or windows server to the uh, graylog server uh, we have processing pipeline as well so graylog provides pipeline as well which enable the user to run a rule or a series of rules against a specific type of event type to streams pipelines allow routing Uh, denial listing modification and enrichment of messages as they flow through the graylog 
so these are the core features that greylock provide but apart from these features there are also a lot of features that greylock provide with the enterprise version so currently we are talking about the common features only that has been supported by the open source as well now uh, let's talk about the installation so we have this system requirement so greylock server application is com basically compatible with the following operating system so it supports debian 10 and 11 Ubuntu 18.04, 20.04, and 22.04. It also supports RHEL, CentOS, Alma Linux, and Rocky Linux 9. Uh, apart from the operating system, you will need Elasticsearch with the following version. This is the required version, or you can use OpenSearch. So basically, currently OpenSearch is mostly favorable for the latest version of the Greylock. We can even use Mongo. We Uh, actually you have one you should have one operating system or one of these and then you have you should have mongodb 5.0 or 6.0 and then you should have open jdk 17 so these are the basic requirement for the installation and after that there can be different way of installing uh, greylock in your uh, use case like in on your server so it can be like using the operating system so basically greylock provide debian or rpm packages uh, and then you can use these debian or rpm package packages to install greylock in these operating systems or you can use docker files that uh, has been uploaded on the greylock repository you can just pull those uh, docker files and you can run it on your uh, system and you are ready to go you can even download the docker compose file which is basically kind of the easiest and fastest way to uh, get started with greylock so uh, basically greylock provide a docker compose file as well and you can just download it and run it and you will be ready to go with the docker uh, sorry greylock and after that you can do the manual setup as well if you have a very large uh, kind of production uh, requirement and you want to tweak the things according to your use case and you want to do a lot of tweaking in your uh, installation then you can go with the manual setup and that is it uh, with the this is the basic requirement for the installation of the greylock so uh, for me i'll be using docker compose installation of course because it is the fastest way to get started with uh, um, greylock what will be their basic requirements for this you need to have the recent version of docker at least version 20.10.10 is needed in addition to that you can like uh, download the if you, if you are like downloading the uh, docker images so you can download you can use these images that has been provided uh, provided by the community and then uh, this is the like uh, repository link uh, to download the docker compose file and inside your docker compose file you just need to change these two things and you are ready to go let me uh, okay now it's the time for demo i'll showcase that how you can uh, do the installation so we can move to huh? Inside that, yeah, we have Docker Compose. Inside that, so basically, when we will, we will download the Docker Compose file from the uh, like GitHub repo, we will have a cluster and then enterprise and open core different Docker file, uh, Docker Compose files for different use cases. I will be using open core. So I'll go to open core and let's see. Yeah. So before moving forward, let's see what is in Docker file. Uh, docker compose file sorry so uh, this is the docker compose file that has been provided by greylog itself so currently we are using the uh, version of docker file with 3.8 so this will be the syntax that will be using that has been supported by 3.8 version the services that we are using currently is mongodb open search and greylog so uh, for mongodb i am using mongo 5.0 and the volumes that i have attached so basically this will be uh, kind of the uh, the name that I, i i have given for the volume is mongodb data and i am just finding this uh, volume with the hyphen data hyphen db uh, inside the mongo service mongodb service it will try to restart itself if any failure happen and then i have open search which is basically very similar to elastic search and the image that i am using is basically with the tag 2.4.0 
the environment that i am using is basically open search java ops this is basically used to set java heap memory size and then we have bootstrap dot memory lock is equal to true what we are trying to do we are trying to you know lock a particular size of memory in the ram that will be used by open search only so we are trying to uh, do the memory lock here and it has been attached to true uh, and then we have discovery dot type is equal to single node. So the discovery type we are using for open search is basically single node, which is uh, which is kind of good with the dev environment or any test environment if you have. But if you want to go for production environment, you should be uh, like updating it with the multi node or any other discovery type if you want to use according to your use case. Then we have uh, like the security things that we have created. Uh, we have basically marked security as false as of now. Action dot auto create index. Basically, we don't want to create index uh, automatically, so, so we have just aligned it with the false value. Uh, and then we have provided different kind of view limit. So view limit is basically user limit, and we are like setting up two user limits. One is mem lock, and another one is no file. So what is mem lock is basically as we have mentioned we are trying to lock in the memory in the RAM. So mem lock is basically used to you know lock a particular amount of memory in the RAM so that that particular amount of memory will only be used by open search. Right now I'm, I am fixing the data with hard hyphen one and soft hyphen one which basically means that uh, the infinite amount of memory will be like logged for open search only if a particular amount of memory uh, open search want to use then it will be able to use that amount of memory which is basically not a right way to do or you can say it is not the recommended way but it is fine for the testing environment or or any dev environment but if you are on your production environment you should be thinking about how much amount of memory you want to log for open search then we have no file so no file is basically a kind of open file descriptor so what is open file descriptor? It is basically the maximum number of the open file descriptor that a particular process can use at a particular time. So for this open search process, we are uh, like mentioning the amount of open file uh, distributor that can be used by this open search. So the soft limit is basically the automatic limit that has been set by the kernel and it basically be, uh, being imposed by the kernel but the hard limit is basically the ceiling level of the soft limit so it is the highest level that can be uh, that can be used by this particular open search so i have provided the same value for both of this now of course we have attached the volume for the persistency of data even if the open search uh, service will stop or uh, die or it will try to restart then it will have that uh, particular data and it can access the, those data at this particular level. So we are just finding the OS data name with this particular location in the open, ser open search service. Then we have gray log service. So uh, the host name that we have provided this server and the image that we are using is the uh, basically the latest one, uh, Graylog 5.0 and it depends on open search and MongoDB. It will only start when these services get started and are running successfully. We have provided the entry point. So whenever Graylog will start, it will try to run this script first. And what we are trying to do here, we are just trying to initialize the open search first. So uh, if, if and only if the open search will be available at this particular uh, port, then only it will run this particular entry point dot sh. So uh, you can uh, see more about this docker entry point dot sh on the remote repo and it is basically pulling this sh from that only. And we have different environment that we have set. So this is the local host 9000. This is the port where the payload server will be uh, you know available. So we'll be using this one to just access the uh, dashboard of the JLog. Uh, we have node ID file, so if uh, if we uh, want to like any uh, export any data related to node ID, we can export at this particular location, and then we have uh, this. Uh, uh, we have to set the password secret and root password uh, SHA value in our uh, like environment variable file. I have one dot env file and we can set these two values there and yeah then we are ready to go we have different ports that has been aligned for different like syslog for raw tcp or for gelp tcp there are different ports that has been opened and then we have volume and of course we will restart it on failure and uh, the 
volumes that we are using in the whole Docker uh, Compose file has been uh, like mentioned in this file. So this is the Docker Compose file. Uh, we'll just see the uh, uh, environment value that we have set. So basically, this is the file for .env where we have to set the Greylog password secret and Greylog root password SHU. What we have to do? You can just download one command like uh, utility if it is already available in your system then it is okay. You have if you want to generate a password at this length you can just use pw which is password gen generator. So pw gen hyphen n hyphen n represent the number of password that we want to generate and the string number of character that we want. We can just generate it and paste it here in the grail of password secret. And then we have uh, the password that we want to use while logging in the dashboard. You can just, you know, echo that password. Like I'm using your password now, you can change it. And then you can just, you know, modify it or you can redirect in, it into the SHA sum because we need the SHA value, uh, like SHA 256 value in this hash value. So I have just provided uh, this SHA value in this and we are ready to go. And let's see this in action. So, uh, of course, we have this file. We will try to uh, start the Docker Compose file. We will do Docker Compose up and I will try to run it in detached mode. So, let's see. Yeah, we are able to run it successfully. I will go to my, uh, I will go to my browser. I will just search for localhost and it is available at 9000 port. Uh, Okay, so yeah, we have the dashboard now and the default username is admin and the password will be uh, like as I have shown you that it is your password. So I'll just try to sign in and yeah, this is the dashboard that I was talking about. So in the search section, you can see there is all the logs that has been generated within this time frame and then it is basically uh, this chart is basically for five minutes only. Uh, and if you want to like see the live messages, you can just uh, run the live one and it will get updated in every five seconds. If you want to share this uh, with any of your colleagues, you can share it from here. And if you want to search any kind of query, you just need to search it from here. Suppose I want to see if there is any error, I will just search it. And yeah, you can see there are some errors we have. So. Uh, you can find more details about this error. Uh, you can see the source. This is basically the hostname of my local server uh, from where I am getting the data. And uh, if you want to like know more about, uh, you want to get more data about this, let's delete it first so that we can see the, yeah. So from there you can see the packet name and then we have the timestamp and then uh, we have the messages that we are getting. And you can also see the source on, and from the process ID that I am getting this messages and the timestamp here. So you can get or even if you have more tags on your data, you can see those all those uh, data or all those tags in this dashboard. Before that, uh, since I have already set up this uh, thing, but the because I was I was trying to do the syslog. Uh, basically, I was trying to send my system logs in this dashboard. I'll just tell you how we can do that. I have already set it up, but I'll just go through how uh, go through that process again so that we can see how we can set it up. So as you can see, whatever components that we have talked about, uh, you can see all those components here. And we have this input component. So basically, you can generate one input uh, where uh, from where uh, from where whatever place you want to get the data, you can create an input for that. So when we will select this one, we can see that there are a lot of options like AWS Cloud Red, AWS Logs to get the logs from different places. Right now, what I will try to do, I will just try to do syslog UDP. Okay, you can try syslog TCP as well. I will launch this input, 
and I want this input for all the nodes. So I will just mark it global and you can just provide any title you want. Uh, and then uh, this is the bind address that I am providing it is by default and this is the port that we have seen in the like docker compose file for UDP syslog port we have 5.40 and then we have uh, then you can mark everything as default and you can just launch this output but since I have already launched a, a similar output I will not be launching it right now but I can show you after launching you will get this uh, value as you can see the bind address is uh, uh, this one and then we have the port 5140 and the name that I have provided for syslog UDP is test sample. So it is currently running and it will get, it is getting some amount of data that has been mentioned here and the current network IO has been updated here. Okay. So uh, yeah after that what you have to do after that you have to go to your local and then you just have to create a Greylock config file and where you can create that file inside etc you have rsys log dot d if you will go to uh, this place you have different configuration file so I have Greylock configuration file that I have created already I will just try to see the content of this one ok so I have added this config configuration in my file so what I am trying to do here is basically I am just trying to push all the logs that has been generated at this particular location at the at this particular port at this particular IP address and it uh, the server will be available for at this particular port. The at the rate is basically used for UDP transfers if I want to do the TCP transfers and I have set the input as TCP transfer so I will just do double at the rate here I will just update it with the double at the rate symbol here only. And then we have this rsyslog, uh, sys, uh, sorry rsyslog syslog protocol 23 format. So the syslog protocol is uh, like basically it is a standard protocol used for transmitting log messages between different network devices. So and and this is the uh, like particular format that is specifies the structure and content of the messages. So we basically uh, here we have mentioned this this contains basic, basically the standard structure of the messages that we in which we want to transport the messages from one network to another network. So we just need to add this in our configuration file and then we have to restart the uh, RSS lock service and then we'll be able to see all the locks at the search uh, part. So as you can see we are uh, able to get the message count again. So we have different alerts, dashboard, enterprise and security. So security is the function of enterprise. So if we have enterprise level of access then we can just add the security plugin here as well. Uh, so this is the uh, like dashboard for the enterprise things if you want to add then we can like add gray log operations or gray log security here. And this, this graph is basically showing that how much data I have gotten different days. So uh, we can just change it from here the amount of data that I, have, that I have received on this particular dashboard. Then we have the dashboard so basically you can create a new dashboard from here and you can also share it with your colleagues. So let us see if we can create one. So basically dashboards are uh, like generated in the form of different pages. So we just have to you know go to create and we can create a generic one or we can use a predefined one. So for this example I will use a predefined one. So you can see I, if, uh, when I have used the predefined one I am just getting how much uh, number of logs that has been like get at a particular time. So I can just mark it as uh, and I can just uh, see from here that in 5 minutes timestamp how much messages that I have get. And uh, I can even expand it and do lots of stuff with this particular um, table. And I can even see the logs that are coming at that place. I can just export those logs here. Uh, so I have this uh, like different logs that I can see. And I have like different aggregation message count as well. So in this way you can create like different kind of data. And you can even save this uh, dashboard. Otherwise if you will not save it, you will go to a different location and it will just disappear. So you can even create your custom dashboard and you can also create your alert as well. So you just need to like set different event definition and notification value and then, then you can just generate alert on those particular event. If that event occurs then you can just uh, 
uh, it will just give you an alert on different devices you can set like if you want the alerts on slack or on your email or on pager duty you can just set it up according to your use case then we have like this stream so basically uh, we were talking about streams if you want to like distribute data in different format or uh, you just want to create a bunch of data in, on the basis of particular metadata then you can just create it from here so uh, yeah and of course you can explore the dashboard it is very easy so i'll not go in the detail of this dashboard so this is it from the graylog perspective uh, yeah so if you have any question you can ask so yeah hello yeah thank you so much for your session uh Though I was active in the session as well, so uh, I'm getting to link through. But uh, as you mentioned, that we are locking the uh, storage, right? Mm -hmm. Locking the storage. Locking the storage, and it comes true. What if uh, it comes false in it? Okay, so uh, suppose you want uh, to use the open source, right? Uh, open search, yeah. right? So open search, you want to like. Uh, lock a particular amount of memory in that yes. uh, like in ram that open search will use that particular amount of memory and this particular amount of memory cannot be used by another process so if we do that, uh, like if we we'll align the false value to that what what uh, what it will happen that ram gets memory on the basis of priority if like some other process comes and uh, the priority of that process is basically greater than the priority of the open open uh, search that you are running and then open search will start failing because it will it will have like starvation condition that will generate it. so we have to provide a particular amount of like memory of search so that it can like it will not stop it will try to run and it will be running continuously till the end of the process Okay, uh, guys, any of your questions, please come up. Uh, I don't think so. No one has any question. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Thank. Thank you so much uh, for such a brief insight on this topic. Uh, let's wrap up. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. For yeah, it was us. a nice session, Swami. Thank you, thank you, Roy. Thank you very much, team, for your time.